All right, then. Welcome to our first episode of Sons of Liberty podcast. Uh, I'm here with King Chow. Hey, uh. uh Kaika XD. Bruh, just Kaika. Uh, <laughs> bro, that's not fucking the recording. No, 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 no. Keep it. It's fine. Okay. And uh, me, myself, the greatest person here, Sonny. Mm hmm. Makes sense. Um, yeah, Pog. Remember, Pog this. Don't take this podcast too personally. We it's are. It's just a joke, people. It's just a satire. Well, it's not it's a just joke. an irony. It's just, you know, it's our opinions. Respect our opinions. Don't, don't, respect don't, don't, we have to say that so we don't get cancelled. <laughs> Bro, you know uh, it's a joke if, Vince, or if King Chow's here. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> we had the, uh, I'm okay, keeping that anyway. in. <laughs> uh, I think we should redo the intro. No, no, nah, nah, it, it's gold. Yeah, it's this, gold. This is, yeah, this is good. Okay. All right, then let's uh, step right into this podcast. Remember, cool. we are uh, young people who yeah. don't know as much about politics, but are very knowledgeable in certain areas. And Yeah, yeah says you. I'm, I'm actually a political savant. I've been studying yeah. politics for like five months now, and I'm an avid <laughs> J-Rank fan. It. Therefore, I know everything about politics there is to know. No, I know. I follow Ben Shapiro on Twitter. Bro, he know, you know oh. everything if you follow Ben Shapiro Yeah, I know. If you follow Ben Shapiro, you're automatically based. Okay. So, just a little disclaimer for everyone. We are center-right, meaning we do have a right-wing right wing view on politics. And bias. Um, I guess I am more of a common-sense conservative, what Donald Trump calls a, a common-sense conservative, where I'm not beholden to the Republican Party, so I'll call it their BS. Um, Florida, you... Can explain how you view politics um so i view policies like almost like aria you know with common sense and with uh research behind what i say and what i do um so uh, as well i'm like i feel like i'm a common sense conservative um <laughs> vincent thank you mike um i i, I can't control it, bro <laughs> i'm just gonna mute myself <laughs> so so if um like I said, I go with by my research, and I find that I am more, you know, more right wing, and I feel like certain topics, certain majority of topics, I'm right wing, and I agree with the, what the right says in those topics. So, Vincent, if you'd like to display what you believe after unmuting yourself. Okay, I uh, bet. Um, so, uh, these these losers, magatards. Uh, they're <laughs> wrong in every way. Um, I I am actually like. Wow. Uh, okay, I consider myself a libertarian, but I'm actually a little bit closer to, like, uh, an anarcho-capitalist. But for the sake of this podcast, I'm a libertarian. I'm definitely on the right side of the spectrum, but I'm not conservative. I don't, like, uphold to traditional values or want to start, like, 10,000 wars or whatever, okay? I'm, like, probably the most left person here, but I am in no ways a leftist. I'm just, you know... Yeah, just liberals go. Don't re tread on me yeah. and cap off of my. <laughs> liberals go re whenever they see anyone literally to the right of Hillary Clinton, which is Base. a lot of people. A lot. Right, of people. I think that's a good segue to our first topic. Okay. Uh, social social justice. justices. <laughs> um, who would like to start? All right, let's start with pronouns. Man, am oh. I tired of looking at everyone's Twitter <laughs> bio. Man, am I tired of looking at emails and they say the pronouns. It's so annoying. Bro. I'm sorry if I look at your name, I know your pronouns. Oh you do God. not need to repeat it to me. Most of the population oh. is not a trans person. I think we could all agree on that. I know. Like, seriously, everywhere I see, even my, it's so influential, my cousins even have their, um genders or whatever pronoun in their bios it just pisses me off yeah honestly it's like okay have either of you heard of neo pronouns i've uh, heard of the zizer yeah neo those are those are neo pronouns the no neo uh, uh prefix meaning new it's i think it's an instagram thing but in general it's 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 just really bad because not even like trans people identify with neo pronouns. <laughs> it's like if you if you actually like identify with neo pronouns, I'm just thinking either you're like an attention whore and you really want people <laughs> to look at you and like say, "Oh wow, you're really special," or right, you think oh, gender is a social construct and I want to be different, so I'm just gonna use these pronouns and if anyone 
calls me anything other than exactly what I tell them, then they must be uh, racist, bigot, sexist, xenophobic, Islamophobic, uh, like the worst people on earth, worse than Hitler, worse than Trump. Like, you know, it, it, yeah. it's bullshit. The thing is, right, I, I support trans people. Like, quite a few of my best friends are actually trans. And I don't have a problem with trans people existing like a lot of leftists like think like people like us do. I don't. Right. I really don't. And I call trans people by their preferred pronouns. I don't care. But I shouldn't be thrown in jail if I don't want to. I shouldn't be charged fines for misgendering people. And if people are going to come out here with this like, ah, I have uh, queequem pronouns. It's like, shut the fuck up, honestly. Yeah, I mean, look. I would not want my children to be trans, but I support people's right to be trans because I think the government has no business being involved in people's lives. Aside from the fact of protecting people's individual uh, rights and liberties. Also based. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll agree with trans people uh, in the fact that they should be allowed to live the life, live their lives the way they want. But when it gets to the point where I'm going to be canceled for not including my pronouns in my bio. Like, we got problems, right? I don't want to be controlled by the mob. This is seriously mob uh, mob rule at this point, right? Yeah. Especially at this time and age, where it's like, we're forced to do something. And I don't mind be trans. Be whatever you want, as long as it doesn't affect me. Like, it's taken to the point where, as Arya said, like, if we don't do what they say, we will get crucified. And we'll get torched, all these things. And, like, me, coming from, like, a religious household and a religious upbringing, I just feel, find it dumb. Like, I don't want my kids, as Ari said, to become this. But if they, if other people want to do it, go right ahead. Your money, do what you want your life. You know? Right. And, yeah. oh, sorry. Okay. So, I think that the pronoun situation is really affecting everyone at this point if you really don't think it's affecting everyone you're wrong because we all go to high school we go to the same high school right i don't mean to dox ourselves but in the beginning then of don't the year, dox us oh my God. well i'm not saying which high school we go to but in the beginning of the year all right our teachers every single one made us include our preferred pronouns all right that is insane i mean most teachers know us so if I'm just gonna say this right now, if a student has a problem with their pronouns or how they want to be called, bring that up privately to the teacher. I don't care. You don't have to tell me. I don't want to interact with you. I'm sorry. I'm not a social person. Yeah, that's fair. It's like it's not even like we like are like antisocial to trans people. We're just antisocial. Period. <laughs> right, and it's to, it's going to the point where. It's just being shoved in my face, and I'm tired of it. Honestly. Yeah. I feel like, like especially schools where we are, yeah. it's just very liberal, and, like, and it casts out. You know how they say it's inclusive? It's not really inclusive. It's only for inclusive to this sort of group, you know? Honestly, it's more like, exclusive than anything. But I think right. that academia is a great topic for <laughs> another time. Let's uh, keep it on track, everybody. <laughs> all right so with the pronouns i think we don't know their politi- it's just for political correctness points yeah um, which is a great segue to political correctness <laughs> or now, rather I know, political well, incorrectness that's right getting yeah. hated and canceled online for saying things that people <laughs> can't agree with that's <laughs> that that's poggers honestly and I just want to mention this. Donald Trump, he ran his whole campaign in 2016 on political correctness slash incorrectness. So yeah. I don't think this topic's going anywhere soon. I, I think it's going to be here to stay. And I think we are just seeing the start of it, right? Pronouns are obviously... I don't think it was the start of political correctness, but I think it is the manifestation of it. So I don't think it's to its highest point, but I think it's getting there, right? Yeah, like soon we'll be forced to name people by their preferred pronouns in public. And if we don't, 
will be crucified, as you know, Sonny said. God forbid. Yeah. And um, honestly, if you ask me, it's like I think that uh, like political correctness is the problem, and then pronouns and like neo pronouns and like you know like getting fined for using said wrong pronouns, um, or like mi- like misgendered people or whatever. I think that's a symptom of political correctness, uh, but not really its like own individual issue. And that you know if political correctness wasn't enforced on people, but rather maybe. Like, you know, slightly suggested, like, oh, I don't know, politeness, like it was for basically the rest of human history. Um, you know, uh, all the other issues would probably solve themselves as well, because they all... Right, it's like chivalry, right? Uh, if you're in a traditional marriage, right, or type of relationship, as a man, you should hold open the door for a woman. Right, that's it's just the polite thing to do. Yeah, and I'm fine with calling yeah, yeah. people by their preferred pronouns, but once it comes to the point where they're shoving it in my face and I'll get jail time if I don't call them by their preferred pronouns, then I have a problem. I will call people by whatever they want to be called. I don't care, right? I'm a nice person in real life. I know, maybe hard to believe, <laughs> but there is a line, and I feel like we're. We're sort of crossing it at this point. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that's sort of how I feel about it. Yeah. I yeah, completely man. agree. Yeah, I also agree. But I'm like, uh, Ari, I'm not a very nice person, so I'm... I will probably <laughs> straight out say the pronoun you were born with, because it, when you're born, the doctor will determine what gender you are. If you have a fucking penis, or you have a, a vagina. You one. Right. Vagina females dicks or males or penis for males you know so like i will legit say you're male female if you want to be called a certain way let me know you know politely say you're a man or a female whatever you're designated as at birth okay so you're just politically incorrect straight out that's pretty cool yeah and like if i go to jail well i'll just pull out the race card <laughs> actually you're yeah that's, that's pretty overpowered which, <laughs> like... which uh my co-hosts do not have the privilege of a Unfortunately, that out. <laughs> you have yeah. to say that plurally, by the way. Oh Not yeah. Okay, in 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 a, in a later episode, we have to talk uh, about uh, race politics, uh, because right, yeah. you know there is kind of the question of why does Huerta get the race card and we don't. But again, that's a that that's a, that's a different thing. Right. To be honest, I don't even think Sonny even has the race card, or you know, he yeah, can't I... even play into identity politics because of how he thinks. Right. Right. Black Lives Matter. <clears throat> only matters for the people who think like the mob. Uh, that's actually a perfect segue <laughs> to uh, SJWs. Like SJWs and BLM members. Now, I will talk about BLM members personally because I know more about them. I know Vincent knows more about the SJWs. Um, yeah. With personal experience. Yeah. Yeah. For so, yeah, my soul. Personal. BLM, for those of you who don't know, is Black Lives Matter. And it is a group that started off. Uh, because a certain cop has murdered a or assisted murder, even though George, he was going to die like eventually because he was on drugs, a person named George Floyd. And yes, what the officer did was wrong. We believe that. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, co host. Yeah, but I think, okay, so what I think of Black Lives Matter is, is it wasn't started because of George Floyd, it was just magnified because of his death it was started way before george floyd i think we could all agree on that right yeah um no no black lives matter has existed okay for a long time like since the 2010s i i think it's very important that we mention this is not the first time that black lives matter has blown up like this riots in the streets and the racial tensions spiking and then dropping again this is not the first time this kind of thing has happened well, with the Black Lives Matter, I mean, I, this is, like, my first time hearing yeah, about... Yeah, I think it's people's first time being exposed to Black Lives Matter. I know it was definitely my first time being it exposed was, to it, but... I know it was created before. I know that for a fact. Yeah. That it was created way before George Floyd. Um, But what really magnetized it and, you know, got it to the media and made all these riots, not, not protests, riots, you know... It was both. It was mm. both protests and riots. I think... So, this is the problem I have with social media, right? If media. George Floyd dies, right, by a cop, 
and the video is viewed, let's just say, you know, 3 million times, it's obviously been viewed more than that, then it looks like 3 million black people have been killed by the cop, right? And if one city, particularly Portland, you know, Los Angeles, um, I forget the uh, the city in Wisconsin, oh, Kenosha, and, and if all the riots are viewed 2 million times, well, it looks like there's 2 million riots. So I think that's a very important distinction to be made. What? Because I don't want to be a what? hypocrite. So this is what I'm saying, right? I'm sorry if the, I don't really understand what you're saying at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll reiterate it. So if George Floyd, right, and his his death was filmed, right? Yes. And if that's viewed three million times, it looks like three million black people have been shot by three million cops. Wait, right? what? Those three million people get to watch it if they got shot. Well, Wait, it's, it's that doesn't make any sense. Twitter. No, it okay. does. Okay, okay, Arya, the amount of views that the video gets doesn't equate to that many black people being shot by police. No, what are you but talking that's what about? it looks like. No, right? it doesn't. It does, I feel though. like, not really, because, remember, not... It just looks I like 3 million supporters. Say. Yeah, it's supporters. I wouldn't say the, the people who got shot. You, Be I don't think it's supporters, though, because I watched the video of his death, and I'm not a supporter at all. Yeah, but then did you get shot by a cop as well? And again, that's what it looks like. Yeah, that's, even what, said I, that's, what that's my... Yeah, I'm making the point that that's what it looks like. It looks like 3 million black people have died to cops. Again, I'm not that, saying that's the reality. Yeah, well, I'm then, just saying that's how it's sense. perceived. Okay. But, but like, are you thinking about how okay. those dead black people uh, get to view the video if they're dead? Okay, so let me Great explain. Question. To us, we have... We could think, uh, uh, you know, through the media... But the media portrays it as, well, there are a lot of black people being shot by the cops. And when people see that the video is viewed millions of times, it just reiterates the point that the media is making. So that's why that's why I'm saying that it looks like three million black people have been shot by cops or you know been killed by cops. That's the point I'm making. I, I see what you're trying to say, Keiko. Yeah. And I'm trying to sort of weave that into how conservatives view riots or, you know, pretty much anything right with Hillary Clinton, how, you know, we view the rights. If it looks like, well, you know, there are exceptions like Portland, which has been under siege for like 90 days or something or 60 days. I can't remember the number. But the problem is it's been viewed so many times and I think that it's taking out of context just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, um, I do think that as well, but we also have to look at the way they went about it, you know, like, right. look, many people who, you know, were in the riots also were there to steal from stores, and mm -hmm. plus, what did those stores do, and what did those local businesses do to yep. deserve that? All Remember, right. some of those businesses that were raided and destroyed were black owners as well yeah right yeah. this is this is totally my territory as a libertarian right and as someone who supports you know like uh like very much the idea of capitalism and free trade and whatever in the free market i really really hated the uh, the idea behind the riots which was if we burn down a mcdonald's a insurance will pay for it and b uh will finally get the that police reform that we really needed for so long and uh black people will stop being disproportionately disproportionately shot by police and racism will be over at the end of the day burning down the mcdonald's only burns down the mcdonald's it it prevents yeah. mcdonald's from earning whatever profits uh were supposed to come from that uh property it's just throwing away money and a yeah. perfectly useful business that could have provided food and resources to everyone in that neighborhood exactly. which especially in the neighborhoods where these riots were going on were probably disproportionately uh beneficial just yeah. because those you know tend to be more low-income areas yeah and exactly. if you remember like they also made police cuts around those times meaning like a lot of police officers were let off and like, there wasn't as many, like, uh, people to protect those people who didn't, uh, like, have firearms, didn't, weren't able to protect themselves. 
Yeah, that was just so BS. I mean, in New York, you saw the murder rate skyrocket to 200%. I think it was like 268, but I'm just going to say 200%. And yeah. people are saying, okay, let's have less cops on the streets and let's see the results when we just had riots in New York and we see that cops are afraid of just arresting people for petty crimes, right? Yeah. And now they're saying, okay, let's make it even more harder on the cops to do their jobs. This won't end well. I think everyone understands that, except people with two brain cells. Well, did you hear about the units that are in LAPD, you know, that got cut, the units? Mm -hmm. For example, the sexual assault unit, which is kind of ironic. Like, right. you think the leftists will want that unit to stay, but because of those budget cuts that were given to Black Lives Matter, like, uh, like, found, like, foundations, you know, so they can donate mm -hmm. to that, like... That, that money should have gone to those units that were cut that, you know, like the homeless uh, unit that dealt with the homeless people. Like, there's so many units that were cut and people who were transferred to patrol units. Right. And, like, and it's just kind of ironic at that point. I think they cut the uh, the sexual assault unit or whatever because of Jacob Blake. Because from what I understand, and all, this is all developing, by the way, so this is subject to change, but Jacob Blake, he's alleged of digital rape and uh the cops were called on him uh because of that alleged crime and you know he obviously got shot just a couple months ago and it became this big thing so that's why i think the sexual assault units are being cut as to the homeless uh department being cut what i think is a lot for some reason a lot of liberals mm -hmm. tend to think that the homeless people are being oppressed by the police because their stuff's being taken off the road which is yeah. kind of backwards thinking because if there are more homeless people on the side of the roads this actually drives down property right so you'll you'll actually have more impoverished people which you know it, it sort of goes against their whole voting base in my opinion what do you guys think about that uh yeah um you know and of course there is also kind of uh you know the argument that it, it is really questionable whether those homeless people actually own any of the things that they are able to find and keep for themselves in the streets. Because, like, they didn't pay for those things, but I get that a lot of it's, like, trash and nobody really is, you know, going for those items anyway, so I guess it doesn't exactly matter practically. But, you know, technically there can be an argument made there. But I just really quickly uh, want to pivot really quickly back to, like, BLM, because... There is something that I wanted to say since the very beginning of the podcast. Yeah. The most, the biggest thing about Black Lives Matter that I hate is that the movement is a bear trap. Where, and here's what I mean by that, right? Um, if you say that you do not support Black Lives Matter, the first thing that people uh, who are proponents of the movement will say, oh, so you don't believe that Black Lives Matter? No. Of course I believe that black lives matter. Of course I believe that, you know, black people getting, like, killed by police is a bad thing. Of course I do. But that does not mean that I have to support the movement or support the wacko ideology behind it. At the end of the day, Black Lives Matter has strategically used the, uh, the, the, uh, the boiling race tensions in this country to give itself... A foundation where dissidence is treated as racial bigotry. I'm not a bigot for hating Black Lives Matter, and neither is most other people who, you know, hate Black Lives Matter. Of course, there's that, what, 0.25% of people who actually don't think that Black Lives Matter at all. Uh, and those yeah. people definitely are racist. But what I'm trying to say is, they it's actually, like, very strategic what they've done. They've made it so disagreeing with them is tantamount to being one of, like, the worst kinds of people imaginable. And, honestly, I would applaud them if it wasn't literally slowly eroding our country and the yeah. ideas behind it. Yeah. So, you know. You know... Well, yeah. Oh, alright. Yeah. Um, I'll, you, I'll go, okay. Okay, yeah. So, what I think should happen, right... You know how... You guys heard about all the the Russia thing where they're hacking the US government or whatever? <laughs> they got, like, a lot of documents or whatever? Yeah. Bro, if they want to destabilize the country, all they should do is fund Black Lives Matter. That's all they should do, and then they win. Yeah. 
aside from that, Republicans, fun AOC. She's really funny. I want to see her more on Twitch. Just <laughs> makes a good laugh. AOC on Twitch. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so funny to watch we should, we should make a special episode if we ever hit a thousand YouTube, YouTube subscribers we should do a, a thing where we just watch AOC's Twitch stream <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first that's our that's our first promise we're maybe we'll do a reaction you know, we'll do, we won't, it won't be really positive reaction video reaction video, reaction video. Anyways. although it's not really a reaction for me because I've seen a couple clips but I have not All seen right, the anyways, full clips. Uh, let's go back on yeah. topic yes so Speaking on Black Lives Matter, most people in the BLM movement believe abortion is good. Now, it's kind of ironic since abortion kills black babies as well. It's not at know, a you know, higher black disproportionate baby. rate. Yes. Disproportionately. Thanks, Planned Parenthood. That was a joke. Dumb. <laughs> so, I just think that it's kind of ironic and hypocritical because not only are you fighting for Black Lives people not be shot by cops but shouldn't you also be protesting against the uh, abortion clinics right yeah kind of which one do you want you know you can't pick both you have to pick one of them but yeah which is also more further proof that uh black lives matter advocates don't actually care about black lives they just want to use them for political power exactly. again the pair of the bear trap argument you know right and they're not really universally consistent with their arguments. And this is why I like Kanye West. I know a lot of people will. Oh, <laughs> God. But. Here we go please. again. Um, okay, Kanye wait, wears please. a MAGA hat. Therefore, he's like a political <laughs> savant. Makes sense. All right. All right. All right. So let me explain. Kanye believes that abortion is bad. Not because of the moral implications of abortion. But more so that it was a tactic used by the founder of Planned Parenthood. I, f I forget her name. It escapes me. I'm Doesn't sorry. Doesn't really matter, let's be real. Yeah, but it, yeah. Um, it was a tactic used by the founder to actually um, keep in check the, the African-American population. That's Literal right. eugenics. It was, yeah, it was plain and simple eugenics, white supremacist bigotry. It was, yeah, it's as bad as it seems. And yeah. not a lot of people know this because there's a positive, I guess, aura surrounding Planned Parenthood the, or, right, the because there, um, there are a lot of people who say that, like, abortion is healthcare, for instance, and so yeah. they, they're, they like, trying to kill two birds with one stone, because, you know, like, a lot of uh, leftists support, like, free healthcare, so what they want is for abortion to be bundled in with that idea, and so if you support mm -hmm. abortion, you support free healthcare and vice versa, which is very often not true, but then they can just excommunicate the outliers. Exactly. Yeah, and I, it just, they try to lump everything into one category, or like they like to intersectionality, <laughs> right? And it's it's so uh, weird because they're against labels, but they also do it themselves. So if you're a Democrat, you must support this, and if you don't, you're going to be canceled by the mob. It's such backwards thinking, and I'm surprised they've gone this far, honestly. All right, Sonny, wow. you got anything to add? Uh, yeah, I guess like stuff to add so like i feel like it's different in the state level as well like how they run things you know some states you know i which does any states you know still have abortion illegal i don't think so because uh roe v wade sort of you know yeah because you know every state have their has their own way of uh thinking around kinds of things like this like, you know, how they handle the BLM movement, how they handle their own policing. So now our policing at a local level, you know, it's kind of going sh to shite, you know. Yeah. So. It's unfortunate, you yeah. know. I almost kind of but, believe that it might yeah. have been like well, a tactic to. Guess what? Decrease guess what? Police. That ties to our next topic today. <laughs> well, Great segue, man. man. Smooth transitions. How yep. sunny. states and local events handle their own different policies and all that. Um, I would like to start off with our own governor. How much of a hypocrite he is, because his daughter, Wait, isn't, isn't I believe, it, isn't had government? either symptoms or she tested positive for COVID, and so the whole family is quarantining. And in that, he's trying to display that we should all stay inside and all this, which kind of makes him hypocritical. He's like, oh, well, like, what about your daughter, huh? Like, oh. she got COVID and your house in quarantine. Why should we listen to you? If you're not following your own rules, why should we follow them? Kind of thing, right? Yeah, by the way, I'm just going to say this outright. 
Gavin Mussolini, he's horrible. He's a hypocrite. He says all yeah. these things, um, you know, not to go outside, not to go interact with people at restaurants, even though he does it, he does it himself with, you know, other donors to him and other high-ranking officials in the Democratic Party. So yeah, I think it's sense. a situation like he thinks he is above us. It's It's really weird. What do you mean, bro? He is above us. With all of those really politically correct movements, he is clearly such a more rational, reasonable person. He deserves to go outside. He deserves yeah. to go outside and enjoy himself. Oh, well, we all right away not able to, you know, do the basic functions of our lives. But again, and that's a different The problem topic. is that's the only rational thinking that can serve, or anyone right-wing of Hillary Clinton can think of, <laughs> because they literally say... If you go outside, you're killing your grandma. But the sort of right wing uh, view on this is, you know, there's a pandemic going on. You have to evaluate the rewards and risks of your um, visits to a restaurant. And hopefully you'll make the right decision. And if you don't, oh, well, you it's, you know, ultimately you made that decision. And we're not going to bar you from making your own decisions. And... You know, leftists they like to say, "Oh, you're just complicit in killing your grandma." Well, no, that's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you have a brain, use it. Gavin Newsom is like, "You don't have a brain, let me use it. <laughs> <laughs> let me think for you." Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, that kind of ties into the fact of right now. There's like, uh, I know in Tarzana, there's like 80 patients that test positive in COVID, and seven mm-hmm. died yesterday. COVID. Could have been funny. The vid. You know, we might even get cancelled on YouTube because we can't say COVID or some shit like that. Oh, my bad. Okay. okay we're so me... we're so unintelligent. Me, me we don't know what we're talking about. Let me let me say it again. Um, alright. Editor, start now. So... I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> Keep going. Shut up, Snow. Ari's the editor. Fuck off. <laughs> Ari he's he's, he's recording this on OBS. He has to edit Drive it, me a river. Oh. oh, fuck. Okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> whatever the the nineteen, you know, y- y'all know what I fucking mean. Shut the fuck up. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like eighty patients in Tarzana, seven dead yesterday. Um, it's kind of tragic, you know, but obviously, you know, we just need to be more careful. It's during the winter time; people is, are more susceptible to the virus because of the allergies and that. And uh, right, which was kind of surprising. Like, wouldn't you suspect we get spikes? during the riots and stuff like that instead yeah, of we did we did but not as not to this severe you well, know? Okay, well yeah because let me it's explain to you right no, well, not only that just the virus is getting smarter right I, this is this goes back to basic biology or yeah, well, basic you, you science about the new strain that uh, yeah exactly there's like a new uk string or whatever the COVID virus becomes 20. smarter yeah, the virus becomes smarter. It outsmarts us. Dumber. It's gonna find new is, tactics. Is this ever gonna end? No, probably not. We're probably gonna live like this. We're gonna have haz- Everyone's getting issued a hazmat suit. That's what's gonna. That's what hey, I mean, it's better than wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah. I mean, before we make any weird statements, let's just make this clear: we're not scientists. We don't know a lot about the not implications of scientists. the vid. But we've know. researched people who do. So right, and it's like. Leftists, they claim to be, you know, the arbiters of science, and they're the party of science. And reason. But then they also, yeah, and then they also say, hey, you shouldn't go outside even if you've been, you know, even if you had COVID, and you know you definitely have COVID, and, you know, the infection rate twice is very low, but it still could happen, so you should stay inside. Well, why do we send our children to school, like, two years ago, when the flu was around? I mean... People are dying to COVID less than the flu if you're under the age of 20. Okay. That's a fact. I will say one thing. Um, the coronavirus and the flu are not the same thing. A lot of people, uh, yeah. you know, who are they like... They conflate them. Yeah, they conflate them a lot. They're not the same. COVID is definitely mm-hmm. a lot more serious. But, uh, okay. Again, we need to be taking this uh, as seriously as we can. And... Also, as rationally as we can. And I think, uh, right. first and foremost, that rational does not mean forcing everyone to stay inside their home for, for like, what, 10 months? Never letting them go out unless they're a protester or something. 
and they're like supporting uh, your cause to get reelected for whatever uh, government position you're in. Another reason why the government's corrupt, but that's another episode. Um, really? But you know, it's like you're locked inside your house, and you can't go anywhere or do anything because you'd be killing grandma. But and right. and this is a personal anecdote. I know this isn't like uh, facts and logic, Ben Shapiro, right? This is an, a personal anecdote of how this has affected me. My grandparents, uh, they have gone through serious physical and mental degradation because they haven't been allowed to go outside. And they're the elderly. They're part of the population that are supposed to be protected by the lockdown. But it's actually doing them a lot more harm than, what, the, like, 5% or less chance that they would ever get COVID because right. people do have common sense. If you're sick, obviously quarantine yourself, keep everything in your house clean, wash your hands, wear a mask, whatever. But if you're not sick and you don't know anyone who has been sick, and if you have, it's been at least two months, if not longer, you should be allowed to go to your job, provide for your family, go to your school, and live your life. We can weather the storm of the pandemic without also, you know, slowly killing people inside their own homes in the process. It's kind of a miracle that we've been able to adapt to this new uh, lifestyle of living in the way that we have. But the truth of the matter is, man was not supposed to live like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will say one thing. Though, uh, before uh, I, you know, I finish up, it it isn't all bad. I think that this is definitely going to create a lot of great changes. Um, a lot of jobs that uh, could have been worked from home, but just haven't been because of tradition, are now being done from home. And if that becomes a permanent change, that will overall be better for people. Because the more we can streamline work into private sectors instead of public sectors... Uh, the better it will be for a lot of people. But that's a very situational benefit, and most people obviously can't even do their work at all, so they're running on whatever savings they have, if any. And plenty yeah. are starving, and plenty have died because they couldn't go to work because of the COVID lockdown. It's it's a trade-off. Do you right, want... I... What? Yeah, go for it. No, I was just saying, like, the trade-off is, do you want a bunch of people to die from a virus for like four months and then you know it should very soon after like die down because everyone has either gotten it and they're immune or they're they've learned their lesson and they're staying inside when they're vulnerable right or do you lock everybody up by mandatory law enforcement and coercion do you force everyone to starve inside their own homes and force those who are the most at risk to slowly wither away without any ability to keep themselves in top shape and then say at the end of the day, look, Patrick, we saved the city. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of ironic that these COVID lockdowns are aiming to protect the children and the elderly even though it's doing the complete opposite as you mentioned um elderly are becoming more i guess uh they're it's taking a psychological toll on their minds so it's more difficult for them to interact with people and the same is happening for children where children are becoming socially inept and they're becoming socially inexperienced and i particularly see this among pretty much if you're I guess a sophomore and down and you know that's pretty much grade 10 and down because most children they don't know each other when they go into school right especially if you're a freshman you don't know anyone the only interaction that you have with other students is if the teacher makes you do um, like group projects but even then it's really awkward not a lot of people unmute themselves to talk so that's where I think the schools right now are lacking right they're not bridging that uh that uh the school environment and social interactions and i think that's really bad especially for our children and i'm very scared to see the next generation of uh 
of, of thinkers. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Honestly, let's just hope that this doesn't go past 2020, although it almost definitely will. I mean, like, if this goes on for longer than two years, this could have lasting permanent effects on the next generation and our society as a whole. And I don't know what yeah, we're yeah. going to do about that. Well, at least I can watch sports. And play <laughs> Among Us during class. Holla! <laughs> I mean, even totally worth it. They're taking a beating right now, not just because they're becoming, you know, politically correct, but <laughs> just because the government is literally shutting the, the events down, which is unfortunate. Hmm. Well, I, well, I saw a report. Watch NFL. Well, eh, but I saw a report today that gambling sites where you bet on a certain team winning is extremely down. That's just another, I guess, example of some people's life just going to shit. I mean, it's bad. And you gotta, you gotta think that this has gotta end somehow. Because people are gonna write, and it's not gonna be the good writing, you know, that is portrayed by the media. Uh -huh. The media, <laughs> right? That's a whole different topic. Media the are media. the enemy of the people, except they actually are. But that's again different thing, <sighs> dude. I don't like saying that because it just reminds me of dictators like fucking Stalin. But it's so true. It's Honestly. unfortunately so true, and I don't mean to be oblivious to my um my bigotry, but it is so true and it's so annoying when people say you're just a dictator or you're a tyrant or you're a white supremacist. It's so annoying. Well, I mean, you know, tyranny is widespread, just, you know, not among the population. Right. <coughs> <coughs> I wonder what I'm talking about. <coughs> Hmm. All right, well, so do you have anything to add? No, nah, nothing really. Uh, have all we right. covered all of our uh, topics for today? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're we've covered everything. All right. Well, uh, as you ended, boys, or you want to keep going? I mean, I don't know. We covered a lot of great topics. We uh, made a lot of great points, uh, and we were very right. good at agreeing with each other on everything. God, yes. We... Um, <laughs> Except that one point where I brought it up, you know, the yeah. the black people shot like three million times because it's oh yeah, you know, yeah, because you were objectively wrong, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> objectively wrong. Yeah, yep, right. objectively well, wrong. Like we have bloopers coming out. Uh, no, no, no. no, no this this is all being put in the final cut. All right, all right so all right, so this is their pilot, so obviously gonna be a little shorter than the rest of them. So. Yeah. yeah. Also, I was really worried that we were gonna end off on a sad note, or you know. People are becoming socially inept in the experience. But we ended up on a high note, so, oh, you know, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. We don't want to make people too depressed. All well, right. no, okay, no, you're right. We need to make them more depressed. The world all is right. on fire. We're all going to die. All right, and now I got to say outro. goodbye. Right, let me Bye. See <laughs> let me see that outro. Shut up. Shut up, all of you. You idiots. You bigots. Shut up. Anyways. All right, thanks for listening to the Sons of Liberty uh, first podcast. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Next one will come out. Next week, hopefully, if Vincent wakes up early. <laughs> uh, happy holidays. Uh, yeah, have a uh, Merry yeah. Christmas, man. Don't forget to or happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah, I think Give us released, money! I think this will be released on Christmas, right? So Yeah, yeah. it'll be released Friday. Um, if not, blame Aria or Vincent. Uh, it's Bruh. Never the Bruh. Fault. It's always my fault. Why for the Browns' man's fault. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is King Chow. <laughs> oh. Sign now. Peace. Also, right. uh, one last also, thing. Follow socials. Yeah, obviously follow social. We got a uh, Twitter and we got an Instagram. Uh, by the way, if you are uh, anyone from Chow Chat or my like uh, my personal peeps and you see this, uh, it was all a joke, just a jest. I didn't mean any of it. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I just no, really. No, wait, wait, no, I, wait, no, I, I need to be here for you guys to do your thing. Oh, Hold wait, on. Yeah. We did both leave and you by, by yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm Kaika. You don't have to check me out. I'm kind of boring. Uh, yeah. Also, I can't wait to see our more leftist friends react to this, uh, this little thing we made. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed. You know, I'm Sunny, the brightest one out here. Uh, hope I brightened your day today. See, catch you on the flip side.